So Devon is back. So Cognition Labs, the team behind Devon, just announced this. We've been scaling up our infrastructure and we are ready to start gradually letting users off the waitlist for our Devon technical preview. We just asked Devon to help us send out the first batch of invitations. The product is still early and getting it in more people's hands helps us learn about its capabilities and flaws. Thanks to everyone helping us build. I got to give them credit for actually using Devon to build the thing that sends out invitations. So they asked Devon to create a script to send out the invites. Here's the list of people, you know, you go handle it. For those people that are not aware, Devon is sort of branded as this autonomous AI agent. In this case, kind of specialized to develop software. It can do more than that, but that's kind of the core of its functionality. It's got a window in which you can chat with it asynchronously. So basically you give it tasks as they come up and it goes and executes them. It's got its little to-do list that it breaks all the tasks into subtasks that it then goes and executes. It's got a browser and the number of other tools that it needs to complete various tasks. They continue, Devon is new and far from perfect and we welcome feedback, questions and constructive criticism. The purpose of the technical previews for testers to collaborate with Devon on a range of diverse engineering tasks and help us improve its abilities more quickly. The waitlist demand has been overwhelming. I'm, I'm sure it is. This thing blew up. So thanks for your patience as we open up access gradually. To join the waitlist, please fill out this form. Here's the link. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll add a, a link in the description if you want to check it out. So it sounds like they want you to have some unique ideas for how to use Devon, specific use cases for that. And if you've already joined the waitlist, you don't need to do anything. Now, there's been some questions about Devon's abilities. Recently, people are arguing whether or not it is as good as they say it is. Now, seven days ago, I covered this YouTube video called Debunking Devon. It's from the Internet of Bugs. At that time, this video was just getting started. 300 likes. I can't quite see how many views it had, but this is it today. It really blew up. 357,000 views, 15,000 likes. Basically, this guy was saying that it doesn't look like Devon is doing what the company is claiming it's doing. But today is about the specific claim that's the first line of the video description, which says, watch Devon make money taking on messy Upwork tasks. That statement is a lie. You cannot watch that in the video. It does not happen in the video. It does not happen. And he goes on to explain why he believes that. This, of course, blows up on Twitter. Everybody loves drama. Everybody's uh, dunking on Devon. The Upwork lie exposed as false. Even calling Devon vaporware, basically a demo that's put out there to raise money, but the actual project, the actual finished final product never appears. I'm reserving my judgments until I actually get Devon in my hands and, and able to test it out and see for myself what it can and cannot do. For example, Ethan Mollick was, because I'm a little bit confused. I mean, Ethan Mollick was posting quite a bit of cases where he used Devon effectively to create various things, various interesting use cases. You know, here's a video of Devon in action on this project. So it, it does seem like Devon is capable of doing some things, maybe not quite everything, not completely replacing software developers, but not perfect, but cute, as Ethan Mollick says here. One day ago, the Internet of Bugs posted an update. The original poster of the Upwork task has made a video telling his side of the story. Go watch it here. My name is Felipe and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how Devin failed at solving a computer vision project. And I consider that the deliverable given by Devin at the end of this video doesn't fully match what this project is about. And I think I'm a very good fit to do this evaluation, not only because this is a computer vision channel and I'm a computer vision expert, but also because I am the client who posted this job post in Upwork. This this is my job post in Upwork. So the solution given by Devin in this video is not really the type of deliverable I was expecting for this project. Let me show you. So let me read this job proposal. Hello, I'm looking to make inferences with the models in this repository. Uh, for some reason, Upwork removed the link. I'm not sure why. Your deliverable will be telling instructions on how to do it in an EC2 instance in AWS. Please provide your estimate to complete this job. I will not respond to cover letters without an estimate. So basically, you can see it says, I am looking to make inferences with the model in this repository. I am looking to make inferences with the models in this repository. I am the one who is looking to make inferences with the models in this repository. Your deliverable, what I want from you, is detailed instructions on how to do it in an EC2 instance in AWS, right? Please mind that I am not asking someone else to make inferences with this repository, but I am the one who wants to make these inferences. And the only thing I'm asking someone else is to give me detailed instructions on how to do it. But he asked Devin 
I'm looking to make inferences with the models in this repository, please figure it out. So the input, the prompt, was not really the same prompt from my job post, which is a little weird, right? I'm not really sure why they didn't ask Devin to provide detailed instructions on how to do it in an EC2 instance, and they asked Devin to please figure it out. Maybe this was a much more accomplishable task by Devin, maybe they thought this was much more doable, or maybe it's it's a way to make it sound like more cool because it's like, please Well, I kind of, I want to jump in here and just say that Devin is not really a tutorial builder. It's more of a, you know, the final code deliverer or whatever you want to call that. Now, I understand that this person's actual job post did ask somebody, someone to walk him through how to do it himself. Yes, I get that. But to me, I don't really care because the thing is, yes, this person kind of translated that into saying, hey, Devin, do this. So really, you know, and I haven't finished watching the, this video, I'm watching it for the first time along with you, but really I'm curious, did Devin do this, right? The thing that I was tasked to do. If the whole point of, you know, their videos is that the person that prompted Devin didn't translate the prompt correctly from what this person wanted into how he, what he told Devin to do, that's not Devin's fault. If this video was supposed to be like a way to showcase Devin's skills, uh, yeah, you can tell for sure it's very powerful. I mean, it's impressive because Devin somehow implemented this project up and running. So we kind of had to dig deep to find out the truth. We had to watch a video of a video of a video linked to from the comments of another video. This is like very inception. But the goalpost for proving how advanced the AI is, they keep moving. The intricacies of what you have to understand to really tell if Devin the AI finished their project or not, they're getting a lot more complicated, right? There's more that you have to kind of like see everyone's story to really make a final judgment. Here's Ethan Mollick saying, he finds it really fascinating, if not there yet. He's not a coder, so he can't speak about its coding abilities, but it is a new method for working with AI, one built around assigning work autonomously, not about speed, not about instant responses, but rather giving it a task that it then goes and executes. Here's what Cognition Labs just said about this thing. We recently got questions about one of Devin up, about one of Devin's Upwork runs, where Devin's output wasn't what the request asked for. That's, I assume, what this whole drama has been about. This sounds like they're responding to that specific one or two videos we've we've. Uh, we've watched and they're saying it did the task directly instead of giving directions as requested, which to be clear is on us. Sorry for the oversight. Again, this was the prompt given to Devin. So I think the way to judge whether or not Devin did its job is did it complete this prompt, but they continue still Devin is often inefficient and makes mistakes. Some that it fixes and others that causes it to get stuck. Part of the reason we're glad to expand access is so more people can form their own opinions about Devon's strengths and shortcomings. We believe that skepticism is good and we all need to vet new technologies critically. So keep it coming. We are especially thankful for our early enterprise users who have been working with us closely for the past few weeks. In total, there have been over 5,000 Devon sessions. Their feedback has helped us a lot and we're excited to continue learning together how to unlock more real world cases. Hey. So this is Scott Wu, CEO of Cognition AI. I'm Scott from Cognition AI. And today I'm really excited to introduce you to Devin, the first AI software engineer. Now the team behind Cognition is no joke. They're pretty smart people. Here's the 2010 Raytheon Math Counts National Competition. Let's take a look. Where do you go to school and what grade you're in? Um, I go to Longfellow Middle School and I'm in eighth grade. Excellent. All right, good luck, Victoria. Let's see how far she gets. Let's see who she's going up against. Scott, if you could please uh, introduce yourself by telling us where you go to school and what grade you're in. Um, I go to Glasgow Middle School and I'm in seventh grade. Excellent. And if you haven't guessed, his last name is Wu. Scott Wu. Scott, uh, I believe that Math Counts runs in your family. I believe that your older brother, Neil, won the Math Counts National Competition several years ago. Yes. Fantastic. Did he help you uh, prepare for this? Not really. No. All right. Well, Scott, I have a few brothers myself, and uh, so here's what we'll do for you. Because he didn't help you, if you win, we'll make sure that the trophy you win will be just a little bit bigger than the one we gave him a few years ago, so you can hold that over his head for the rest of his life, all right? This is high-quality entertainment. Why don't they play this on TV more? Let's see how well they do on the actual competition. This matchup. And the question is, if the pattern shown continues, what is the letter in the 2010th position? Scott. A. 
A is the correct answer. I don't think it's looking good for Victoria. Scott has a one nothing lead over Victoria as we head into the second question of our matchup. And the next question is, what is the value of 255? Do you see what I mean when I say it's not looking good for Victoria? The value of 255. Scott. 5,000. 5,000 is the correct answer. And Scott is now ahead two to nothing. Moving on to the third question of our matchup. And the next question is, the digits one, two, three, four, and five can be arranged to Scott. Uh -oh. 60. 60 <laughs> is the correct answer, which means- Yeah, I'm gonna pause it right there. I think you can probably figure out how the rest of it went. But the creator of Devon is a child prodigy who's making coding obsolete. I first learned to program when I was nine years old and I fell in love with the ability to turn my ideas into reality. Wu, 27, studied economics at Harvard University and then moved to San Francisco to start his own company. The story of his rare brilliance began when he was a child. As a child, Wu participated in many math competitions and aced them all with ease, as you've just seen. People are saying he is a legend in the competitive programming field, a child math whiz and programming genius. Wu is a legendary grandmaster on the programming platform Code Forces. So it looks like he's at 3297, highest ever that he's been was 3350, which looks like if I'm reading this correctly, that would put him in number somewhere in the top 20 worldwide. And they're funded by the Founders Fund, of course, Peter Thiel is one of the big people on there. You may have heard of uh, some of the other companies that they've uh, helped start, such as SpaceX, Palantir, Stripe, Facebook, Airbnb, Neuralink, Spotify, Cognition Labs. Oh, there's OpenAI, DeepMind Asana, Boring Company, The Athletic, Eight Sleep, Postmates Lift, Twilio, Credit Karma, Oculus, and many, many others. All right, so let's tally it up. The creator of Devon, a child prodigy, MathWiz, graduates from Harvard, goes to San Francisco to start a company. Also, in his spare time, dominates code forces. I forgot to mention that. Before founding Cognition AI, he built on a company, Lunch Club, which was backed by Lightspeed. Coat and A16Z. This is Andreessen Horowitz. Neil Wu, his brother, that's the guy that you briefly mentioned as the other kid to win this competition. All right, so he's also building Cognition Labs. And Neil worked in a number of big tech companies, including Facebook and Google Brain. So after doing all that, they got together. They raised 21 million from Peter Thiel's Founders Fund. The small founding team boasts 10 IOI gold medals which no, that's not the bad guys from Ready Player One. That's the International Olympiad in Informatics. And now they're releasing Devon to the greater public. Now, what do you think? Who's right here? Who's wrong? The people are saying that Devon is vaporware and it's a scam and it's been debunked. Are they correct? Did all these people just come together and get funded by Peter Thiel and A16Z? Maybe they managed to fool them as well. So that's option A. Or option B. And option B is Devon's about to come in like a wrecking ball because it does what it claims to do. Maybe not perfectly. No one's claiming that it's AGI. Maybe it will misunderstand prompts. Maybe it will make mistakes. But maybe this will be the very first example of an autonomous AI agent that's able to execute commands on your behalf, think long term, break up big tasks into smaller sub goals and then go and execute it. But the question is, who would you bet on? As for me, I'm betting on the wrecking ball. My name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.